How did that? Oh, look at that! Look at that stick hanging down. <laughs> okay, now uh, I, I I was interested in in logs. You know, logs are are kind of important in the history of computing, uh, starting back uh, in the early 17th century when astronomers started to realize that the Earth is not the center of the universe, and they wanted to do trig and other uh, calculations to find out where things were. They uh, needed a they needed a better way of calculating than just the abacus, and as a re as a result, Briggs and Napier developed log tables, which were pretty much the standard computing instrument up right up until right up until the time we got our calculators uh, in the second half of the 20th century. So um, this goes this so this this. Doesn't advance. Oh. <laughs> Don't push the red button. Push the one on the side. What happened? Don't push the red button. Laser. 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 Now that now, now now this is a this is a log table. Now when when I was in the tenth grade, that would be like the early nineteen fifties. This is what we were given by our math teacher, and we were taught how to use it. So I asked the math teacher, uh, "How is this table calculated?" And she said, "Well, your table is a is is it's only a four place table, and uh, it's condensed from a much larger table." that was computed by the government. <laughs> and I said, well, well I, I, how was that table calculated? Because I want to know, where did, how, did, how were these numbers, how were these numbers calculated? Well, she said, stop asking, stop asking questions or I'll send you to the principal's office. <laughs> <laughs> well, later I, found, I later found out, um, and Richard talked about people issues, uh, that this is a very interesting people issue. The um, the production of those government log tables was was done during the Franklin Roosevelt uh, WPA um, uh, and uh, was was done by a team of 400 human computers. A human computer being a guy sitting at a desk with pencil and paper. Not usually a guy. And uh, it turned out it was a major event in feminist history because it was the first large government project to be conducted by a woman. And then later, quite by accident, I found out a little bit more about this woman. Uh, she was denied a security clearance and uh, targeted uh, for, uh, by the McCarthy people in 1952, uh, accused of communist leanings. The evidence, uh, the evidence they had against her Two stated pieces of evidence. Two stated pieces of evidence. Number one, for many years she lived with her sister, who was uh, known to be a card-carrying member of the Communist Party. And piece of evidence number two is uh, that she never married or had children. <laughs> but wait a minute. This Stalin was suspected of communism. And he was married. He married twice, and he had two children. <laughs> one of whom, one of whom was, one of whom was killed in World War II, and the other one ended up living in Texas, I think. So that's the stated. That's the stated pieces of evidence. There, there's other pieces of evidence uh, uh, that, that that led me to wonder. Uh, uh, about certain things, so I, I went to the UCLA Gay Library to try to find out if they had anything on this lady, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the Gay Library at UCLA is a room about the size of this this one, lined with the walls are lined with books, and but they really don't have very much. The best they could offer was a Google search, and of course, you know that in the McCarthy days, anything. Uh, Anything of that nature would be buried so deep that even Google could not find it. <laughs> so uh, this is a so this is a uh, 
table of logarithm, and, and uh, I would I, uh, some of these logs, some of these logs you probably have already memorized. Uh, for example, for example, the log of 1.00. Oh, has everybody memorized that? Zero. Yes. Yeah. And, the, and the log of 10. I think we all know what the log of 10. Is. So. <laughs> Two, two, so, uh, so there's you see there's two parts of this. There's a there's a four digit there's a four digit mantissa of the logarithm, and then there's these proportional parts, and and these tell you how much to add or subtract to 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 get the the log for the fourth digit. So it, so if you want to find the log of 1.001, you go to 1.00. And then you go over here and add that four in the last digit, so you get 0. .0004, and that's your log. The, that's the log you're looking for. So uh, I wondered how good I wondered how good these things, this table was. If there's any problem with it. Oh yes, the other thing that when they pass these out, a single sheet of card stock. And so you could fold it in half and it would fit in your textbook. And uh, you, you had the whole thing in front of you. That was kind of nice. Um, and, and I say 20 BC, that's 20 years before calculators. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, and, and then the Richard, other thing. Richard? Huh? We, we can't, over here we can't see. Oh. And, and then the other thing, you, 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 may, you may notice this, this one seems to be Irish. If, if anybody here talks Irish, that that means logarithms in Irish language. And uh, and uh, we were not taught about some of the errors in the table. Oh, errors in the table? What? How could that be? Okay, so what I did is I went into Microsoft Excel and I simulated uh, I simulated all. Uh, 9,000 possible logarithms, and uh, I, I I did a histogram of the error. Uh, that's that's what the errors look like. So you, you so you see the errors go roughly from from minus one in the last digit to plus one, and you notice you notice this peak that this this looks very much like the convolution of two uniform distributions. So. So uh, I, I found that there's two sources of errors. Uh, first of all, is the rounding in the table because Richard, it's rounded to four Richard, decimal places. Before you go on, how did you visually look at the table and see what Excel did and note the error? No, I use Excel has a log function in it. But how did you know what the error? How did you know what? How did yeah, you what did you compare it to? On oh, I, 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 I simulated the table. He's not talking about about mistakes in the table, he's talking about if the table was computed correctly, how much error is there between the, the error, table the, values? The error, what you get from the table, what you get the table did, minus the actual log. But how did you? I, did you type you all the, the table, table values into Excel? No, I didn't have to. I, um, I, for, for the, uh, it, 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 let me tell you, it, it's, it's an Excel, it's an Excel function. The, that if I showed it to you, you would get a migraine. He, he's assuming the table is correct. It's a matter no, of no. I did not assume the table is correct. I, I recomputed the table by using the by using the Excel log function, rounding it to four decimal places, uh, and then but and then and then the, uh, the the interpolation factor in the right column. I use I use that, and, and, oh, yeah. and okay. uh, mm -hmm. I, I was able to I was able to simulate that also by a but, similar process. But did you check every entry against the printed table? Yes, not okay. everyone, but I sampled. Oh, okay, them. so you are assuming that the printed table is correct then? No. Oh no, no the no. printed table. No, if you only sampled it, then then you, then you don't have any idea how many errors there are in it. Uh, you better sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so you assume, so you assume that the table is mostly correct. Yeah, I think he, so, he's assuming that. There's no typographic errors, but he's using the same method to compute that table. Yeah, I'm using errors. the same method they used when they when they on. when they did the table. I can show you the uh, I can show you the Excel spreadsheet. I, I have that. I here, understand that part. If you want to see it later. 
So, so error really yeah. means the difference between the actual log to as many places as Excel can generate yeah. and the four places. Yeah. Okay. By that method. Yeah. Yeah. And the four error places, as given by the method that we were taught to use a table and that little side column of interpolation factors. So, so, there's, so there's two sources of errors. The table has errors, obviously, plus or minus a half in the last digit because <laughs> from rounding, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the interpolation also, because it, uh, they only give it to you, to, you only give it to you a single digit in the last place. So that also has the same kind of error, plus or minus a half in the last di digit. And and so it tr it turns out that the <laughs> the, the <laughs> little <laughs> problems <laughs> for my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Warning. <laughs> Wait a second here. Not true. Okay, so anyway, so so first of all, I looked at the tabul the table values. These are the tabulated values. I look at the at the errors in the tabulated value. Now look, see, it goes from plus 0.5 in the last digit to minus 0.5. And and and, uh, and this is for the 900 tabulated values. And, and you notice there's you know look at these look at these these white bands here. What what's going on? Is there a way to get point, to, to turn the, the pointer to, to, to red? Because yeah, I think yeah. we've got it on blue, and I, I can't blue see on blue. that. It's blue on blue. Sometimes you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Oh, see these yeah. white bands? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, some, something funny is going on. First digit. So, uh, that goes from nine anyway, uh, uh, it turns out they, they, uh, they correspond to places where, where the slope of the logarithm curve matches uh, the 0.001 interval or multiples of it. So in, in, in signal processing we call that error uh, aliasing. Now if you, if, you, if you just look if you just look at the, at the errors and the tabulated values you see they do they do approximately look uniform. There's your histogram. However, uh, I found okay. All good. To, all of these are correct. The four digits. I, I didn't. I didn't check all of them, but I. I, I think I checked ten percent of them. Uh, the only error is due to rounding, and the rounding is not uniformly distributed like this histogram would let, lead you to believe, because if you look <coughs> at sequences of three errors and, and put them into a four by four by four box. Uh, the the chi square test is, is way out of is way out. The chi square score is up in the hundreds, uh, which is you know just a, an incredibly tiny chance that that could happen by accident. So uh, uh, there's a, it turns out there's an easy way to prove things to improve things uh, and what you, one of the things you can do is average the log of x over 2, log of x, and log of 2x. So when you do that, here's what happens. Your, uh, your uniform distribution, you know, the, tails, the tails go away and everything comes in towards the center and you end up with less error. And uh, also there's, there's your statistical summary. Um, the the uh, RMS error gets cut in half roughly. So that's something you can do with a log table. Uh, so uh, I've, I've, I've wondered if you could do a curve fit or something and smooth everything out and, uh, and, and maybe get more digits of precision than is actually there. And the answer is no, it doesn't work. Because if you use the if you use the exact here's a here's an example of a curve fit over a, a short interval here it goes from one to one point four so if you if you if you do the curve fit base on the actual logs you get this orange line which does seem to almost get you out to a fifth decimal place however you don't have that data what you have is the log table data and. Unfortunately, it doesn't it, it doesn't get you there. 
Okay, now let's talk about interpolation. Okay, the proportional part ta uh, table is faulty, and uh, the error is worse when the last digit is 9 because that's when the proportional part that you add is the greatest. So it's subject to the greatest error. So one of the ways you can fix that is don't let the last digit go above 5. Instead of, instead of adding, instead of adding the proportional part, uh, what you do is subtract from the previous one, so that you never have to. So you, if you could, you the most you have to add is five. If it's greater than five, you subtract five. You subtract a number that's less than five from the previous, uh, not from the, from the next logarithm. And also, um, you can dis discard the proportional part and use. Uh, 0.4343 times D, which is the last digit, over X. Okay, what's 0.4343? Come along with D. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Actually, it's 0.4342944819 to be a little more <laughs> accurate. Thanks for simplifying it's that. It's a very small <laughs> number. You know, that's a very good number to memorize. And also, uh, when you do uh, when you when you when you do this uh, proportional parts, if you carry an extra digit, uh, you'll get you'll get rid of the rounding error. And also, uh, you can use a you can use a slide rule for this. This is this is what I learned to do in college. So uh, this shows what the what happens when you do uh, just the. Uh, uh, when you do just just the limiting the proportional part to five plus or minus five, and you, you can see you get some improvement there, and uh, so here's here's different uh, methods of interpolation. So naive that's the way we were taught in high school to just use a table as is, and when we use the nearest neighbor, uh, that's using the the proportional parts table, but never going beyond five. And then this is this is the, the point four three four three d over x, and uh, as you can see, there's going from there to there. There's a slight improvement in the RMS error. Which what what did they teach if you wanted an extra place? Just don't do it. Huh? When you were taught how to use it. What was the, the advice on how to get that extra place? Just don't do it. No, you can't get an extra place from the four place log table. You can get, you'll, you'll always be plus or minus two or three in that last digit if you try to go get five digits at, from, from a four place table. Don't do it. Just don't, get up there. don't do it. But you can improve things. I mean, uh, plus two or three. Uh, plus two, uh, plus plus or minus two in the fifth digit is is a lot better than plus or minus five in the last digit. See, you you, you really do improve the quality, although you don't get a full extra digit. So uh, that's the uh, that's the improved interpolation. And so if you put all this together. Uh, and if you uh, if you do the averaging, and uh, uh, and you do the interpolation by this method, uh, uh, th th this just shows the, the okay. histogram of the error. Yeah, so he can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'll, uh, why don't I just sit over here? Hey, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> All right. So, so, as you can see, anyway, I think I think that's a significant improvement that that uh, my tenth grade math teacher didn't teach us about. Yeah. Uh, now, if now, of course, beca because you still have some spread from the four place table, and even with averaging of three, uh, this is this is the best you can do. But you can still see. That you've you've knocked out the tails of this curve and and you're doing much better. Okay, so here's uh, here's 
things you can do. You can, if you're clever, you can do things with the table that the maker didn't intend, and uh, you can improve things. And uh, of course, when the math teacher is not looking, <laughs> otherwise you get sent to the principal's office. <laughs> now, I, this is a, this is going a little bit uh, beyond, but. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with AMS 55. That's the, the handbook of mathematical functions. Uh, he he had uh, Abramovich uh, recommends Lagrange interpolation for everything, and that's okay too. But uh, but so, but the, sometimes the problem with the Lagrange interpolation is you end up multiplying a bunch of nasty numbers together, uh, and uh, it's a lot of work. And uh, why not just uh, have a better way of interpolating? So, if you want to interpolate logs, what what, what you do when what you do when you interpolate uh, when you interpolate by the method of the uh, log table, this is this is what you're actually doing. You're this blue curve, and uh, you can. Uh, you can uh, find what you want to do is find an exact point here, B, where where the slope of the slope of this curve matches exactly the slope of B. And the slope of B, of course, is 0.4343 over x plus B. So so here you see the slope is too great. Here the slope is too little, but at, at this point B, the slope is just right that that will intersect the log curve at exactly the point you want. So uh, that's easy to do. Uh, it's just uh, just find that just find this magic point B, and it turns out there's it turns out there's a way we can do that. We can find it exactly. But you don't have to find it exactly because, because it turns out any point, any point in this interval that you choose will be better than either of the two endpoints. So one of the things you might do is work on the mid, work with the midpoint. So we go with the midpoint. Now you're getting to the point where you, you need a, something like a, a, a four banger or a five banger calculator because you're dealing with nasty numbers and division and everything. But you know, this is what you might do back in the days before calculators had logarithm buttons, uh, as we saw yesterday with some of the Commodores. <coughs> so uh, suppose you want to find the log of 1.005. Okay, here, here's here's the result of the calculation. If you if you use, use the slope at the left end, you get this. And now, oh by the way, I've switched to natural logs, but uh, but the, the, the idea is the principle is still the same. So here is here is using the left end of the interval. This is. This is comparable to a, an upper Riemann sum of the integral of one over x. And now here I've used I've used a, a midpoint, and as you can see, the error is significantly better. Then I thought, well, what if you use a geometric mean? If you use a geometric mean, look, the error is. Is there for the geometric mean is half of what it is with the midpoint. So um, uh, they recommend they recommend uh, in the handbook of mathematical functions a five-point Lagrange interpolation for full accuracy. Of course, you know that you're going to lose a digit because you're adding all those things, and the last digit is is still plus or minus a half, no matter what you do. So uh, what we do is we're going to memorize these constants. Uh, this is useful for for busting your your logarithms down to a, a number near one. And uh, logarithm of three, well, I don't always practice what I preach. I haven't memorized that yet. 
but uh, this 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 allows you to divide more factors out of the number who's longer than you can you want to take, and uh, so that that's what you can do now. The, so now when you interpolate, what you're actually doing is is adding um, uh, the logarithm uh, of one plus d over x. The logarithm of 1 plus d over x. d is that last digit, and that's a very small number. In, in the four-place table, it's 0 .001. So, so you, you want to add uh, so, uh, the logarithm of 1.001 to the logarithm that's in the table. And so uh, these are these are these are here's a list of a zoo of all the different kind of things you you can have uh, to try to estimate that logarithm of a number that's near one. So uh, let's see what's a what's a good one. Uh, first of all, you can use this one, which we which we've been doing essentially. The log of uh, the log of x for a number close to one is x minus one. And uh, I'm going to have to block somebody's view here. Where's my HP prime? There it is. So, I'll tell you this: this is this this HP prime thing has been one of my one of my favorite uh, uh, tools for for doing this project. So, so this shows <laughs> this, this shows what the error looks like when you use. 1 over x uh, for the uh, uh, for your approximation <coughs> and as you can see da down here for 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 when x is close to 1 yeah. it looks pretty good looks pretty good yeah. but when you get out there a ways uh, unfortunately let's see here it sort of looks like a lopsided parabola okay so like like x is, let's try x somewhere around 0.1. That's close to 0.1. As you can see, Actually. you're already off in the third decimal place. It's, it's not that great. So let's see what we can do to improve things. Uh, now, now we we also we also could have we also could have a lower Riemann sum, where you divide uh, x minus one divided by x would that would be a lower Riemann sum for the whole interval. And so if you take the average of the up uh, of the take the average of the upper and the lower Riemann sum, you get. You get this, and uh, there, there we go. So as you can see, it's it's somewhat improved. Hmm. Huh. And uh, going further, let's see where. There it is. Oop, it, okay, we're going going back. So so uh, going back to some of these. Uh, uh, some of these are really loud. This is the power series, which we know it doesn't converge for uh, for x greater than two. It doesn't and x less than x greater than two. This thing just doesn't converge at all. Uh, so uh, some so uh, Richard, go stand in front of Richard. <laughs> Stand behind the podium. Okay. Running out of time. All right. So anyway, look, looking at looking at some of these, uh, here's one that I used that I used to use when I got my first calculator uh, before I had my HP 45. It did not have log on it, and you, you could. What this does is is shrink the range of the x minus one approximation. And uh, this is pretty good. I gave this one to Richard, 
I said hit the square root button 10 times, subtract <coughs> 1, and multiply by 1,024. Now what goes wrong here is that when, when you uh, hit the square root button a, a lot of times, you get a number 1.000 mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of zeros and then some digits at the end. Now those digits at the end, there's fewer digits trying to represent the original number that you put in, so there's some loss of information there. However, uh, I found that this was this thing definitely beat a definitely beat a slide rule, and uh, sixteen. So don't don't ever sell short the power of a square yeah. root button. It turns out mm -hmm. there's much more powerful ways we can use a square root button. This this is a continued fraction approximation, and uh, tr truncated continued fraction approximations are what they call Pade approximations. And you, you can rewrite these things as rational functions, which are easy to compute. I tried, instead of, using, instead of using the midpoint of the interval, I tried using the geometric mean of the interval to, as a divisor. And that, that's very interesting because um, it turns out uh, this always gives you a log that's too high, uh, whereas uh, the midpoint rule gives you a log that's too low. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe we can take the average. When you take the average, um, you, 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 you get a formula that, that, that comes from this book. This is Dorfler's Dead Reckoning. And uh, I, I, I got an email from Ron. He said, if we ever have the, this conference in Chicago, he'd love to come. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a, there's a lot he could give us. Uh, he, he came up... Uh, he came up through the fourth interest group and very much like I did. Okay, so some of these other guys are kind of interesting. Uh, it, it turns out, and it turns out, if you if if you take the average of this one and and the and and this one, the average. This I mean, that's supposed to be the average. If you take the average of this and this you end up with something that looks like this. Now, th does anything look suspicious on here? Oh, of course. Yeah. This, this, see, see, this is one, see, one, four, one. It's screaming that it's the integral of something by Simpson's rule. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it turns out, it turns out if you take the average of this and this, you you end up with a Simpson's rule. You end up with a Simpson's rule that is actually, that, which is actually this integral here. Hmm. And guess what that integral is? It's well, x minus one course. divided by the log of x. Exactly what you want. <coughs> so that leads me to what I call the Warner Fairview approximation. Uh, I've taken it, I replaced the Simpson's rule with Bode's rule. And th th there's your Bode's rule integral from, from, for the integral from one, from zero to one of, of, uh, of x to the u du. That's what, that's what it is. Now, let me, let me just show you what, what happens here. Richard, is it just coincidence that your word typo has a typo? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's where Bode's rule, that's where Bode's rule came from. Bode's rule itself <laughs> came from a typo in the Handbook of Mathematical Functions. But your word typo has a typo. Was that, was that a test for us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So anyway, here's uh, so here here's what here's what some of the errors look like, uh, and, and as you can see, like if you want the log of if you want the log of ten, e Dorfler's, which is which is a Simpson rule version of the integral, it it sort of still works, but look how much better the new formula works, and it, you only have to take the square root two times. Uh, with, with Dorfler, you have to take the square root once. Here, you take the square root two times, and uh, and it turns out uh, any any power of two 
um, order, you know, any, how can I say this, uh, any power of two order of, of, of the integral, uh, you know, where the number of intervals is a power of two, you can go up, you, so you can go up to the next Newton codes and probably get something that's, you know, good to the last decimal place. Not that you would ever need to. So that's about it. I'm, uh, oh, one other thing. Uh, I said there's a method of calculating an exact, the exact point that you need to take one over x to get the exact inter, the exact integral, and it turns out that's that's found by um, something called Bourquart's uh, Bourquart's algorithm. It's an, it's very similar to the Gauss accelerated, the Gauss arithmetic geometric mean, and uh, Dorfler, in, in fact, used only the first two terms, which are identical to the Gauss AGM. But uh, he got that Simpson's rule integral anyway. Oh, and, and then finally, this is my last slide. This is my program. The, this, this will give you logarithms to 33 decimal places on the WP34. Cool. So that's it. Thank you, Richard.